Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2023 Genesis G70 Sport Prestige. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline 4 and down below is an 8 speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this G70 for two reasons. First of all, I don't often post many Genesis products here on the channel. They're not super easy to get my hands on and so I'm always excited to bring you more of a product like that but the second reason is the fact that this is owned by a friend of mine and he picked this up for about thirty thousand dollars with six thousand miles on it so keep that in mind during this video yes the msrp was getting close to fifty thousand dollars but these can be had on the used market for a lot less and that is a beautiful thing but if you want to submit your own vehicle you can head on over to my website zachbridle.com submit it's a quick and easy submission form it takes under a minute to fill out and i come out to you but let's Let's get back to that 2.0 liter turbo under the hood. Well, two things that are important about it. First of all, it is the smaller engine offered here in the G70. You could also find these with a 3.3 liter turbo V6 if that's something that you want. Now, this is the smaller engine and the owner wanted that for a little bit of reliability sake. Obviously, it was on the cheaper side. And if you take a look at the engine bay, there's a lot more room to work on it. The owner works on his own cars and so it was important to him to have that extra space heaven forbid he has to service anything like belts ac what have you the other thing about the engine is that this is actually the final year for the two liter turbo moving into 2024 they actually opted for the 2.5 liter turbo similarly found in like the sonata n line and vehicles like that so this is the final year for the 2.0 like i said paired to it eight speed automatic it's doing the job well i don't have any qualms about it and i actually quite like it around town it's shifting and doing the job and i don't have any complaints i think eight speeds is a pretty adequate number for 2023 last but not least this g70 is all-wheel drive which was a little happy surprise and i'm very excited to see that because i do love all-wheel drive cars living here in the midwest all-wheel drive is just one of those assurance things in the winter time i'd rather have it than not have it and so it's nice to see here in the g70 how does it feel to drive the g70 well it actually drives really really nice road noise isn't that loud i think they did have an emphasis on sound deadening which is nice steering is a little bit heavy but it actually does change slightly throughout the different drive modes so you can loosen it up visibility is good the power from the two liter is nice is it gonna crush numbers at the next drag event no but I think it's adequate enough. And if you're between the V6 turbo and the two liter turbo, uh, to me, yes, the V6 would be nicer, but it's not like the end of the world if you don't get it. And some cars, it is that way. There's one option that's terrible and one that's great. I think both are actually very adequate. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a physical gauge and a digital gauge. Off to the left is my physical gauge, which is the speedometer and fuel. And off to the right, we get our digital gauge, which you can switch around for a couple different options that it will tell you. Really, really nice to see that stuff. And Hyundai slash Genesis slash Kia has done this in pretty much all of their modern products. And it's a welcome friend to see. On the steering wheel on the left we have our mode volume and skip track buttons as well as phone and favorites and off to the right we have our adaptive cruise control along with steering assist the overall steering wheel looks really nice has this perforated leather as well as this really nice stitching on it and i'm overall a big fan as well as we have our gauge dimmer switch fuel door open and our trunk release moving on to the door we have two memory seat options power mirrors power locks and power windows as well as our premium sound system speaker moving into the center we do have our touchscreen infotainment system i really like how this is laid out just the apps on here look a lot classier than other hyundai kia products so i really really like that although you could see the similarities and of course this does get these sounds of nature absolutely love to see that and here's the backup camera. Now, one issue is that it does not have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. However, you can wirelessly Bluetooth your phone. It's just that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are still wired. Down below, we have two climate control vents and the hazard switch along with the start stop button. And then we get a whole cluster of buttons. So we do have like our map, navigation, radio, media, favorite, and setup buttons. Tune off to the right, volume off to the left. And then we get our climate controls thrown in here. We have heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, dual zone climate 
all of your necessities here and of course auto climate but i feel like i don't even have to mention that down below we have our 12 volt outlet usb a and a wireless charger would have liked to have seen usb c for 2023 but not the end of the world i'm sure that'll get updated somewhat soon moving into the center console we have the shifter off to the left i actually like how this looks and operates park is its own separate button which i don't love but of course not the end of the world and then we get our drive mode select so we have eco comfort Comfort, sport sport plus and custom which are all fantastic to see and when you do put it up into the sport modes it does open up the exhaust a little bit sounds a little bit meaner which is a nice little touch from genesis below that we have our parking sensors auto holding brake our camera button and power parking brake and then off to the right, we do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 2023 Genesis G70. And unfortunately it fails. It accepts the very first quarter eighth inch of the bottle, but it doesn't sit down. And as soon as I start driving, it falls right out. So unfortunately the G70 Sport Prestige fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Then we do get a center console with a USB-A in it. Very nice to see that. And then we'll talk about the seats. Like I said, they're heated, ventilated, power and memory, and everything I could possibly want from a modern luxury seat in this price bracket. We'll talk about price again at the end of the video, but overall, I think this is a really comfortable car. I really like the seating position. I like how the seat feels. I like how the seat operates. And I can't go on much longer talking about the seat without sounding repetitive. So lovely seats however speaking of seats we do have back seats so let's go do a back seat review all right so we're in the back of the g70 genesis and a couple of things to note sitting behind myself it is cramped this is not a very large back seat i could move up of course and be courteous and i hope you can see it here on camera i actually have buttons for the passenger seat where from the back i can move this forward so if you do have like a car service pick people up have them sit behind the passenger seat and if you don't have a front passenger you can move it up and out of the way and it's gonna feel like a rolls royce back here in terms of features i do have my own climate vents a lot of vehicles in this size don't include that so nice to see as well as i do have a usb a charger fold down center console with two cup holders in there and I get some nice reading lights back here. Overall, it's not a bad back seat because of any features. It's actually quite exquisite back here. I love this look of like brushed aluminum on the doors and perforated leather and all that stuff. It just doesn't have a whole lot of size, but that's also why they make the G80 and G90. So if you are looking for size, go up to those platforms, or of course they offer a lot of SUVs. The trunk is nothing special. Here is the trunk space. I always try to show it for rental car purposes. In all honesty, that's why I started doing the trunk reviews is so if you're planning on renting one when you get to Florida and you're wondering if your luggage is gonna fit, I hope this gives you some type of idea here it is the trunk of the genesis g70 one feature that the owner was able to show me was if you are far away from the car and walk up to it with the key in your pocket and just stand behind the trunk lid it will power open up for you very very cool if your hands are full now we got to talk about the looks and this has been facelifted for 2022. And so I have driven a G70 on the channel before and I'll do a comparison here in a second when we finish the walk around, but I really, really love the design of the G70. I think it's sleek. I think it's low key enough. It's not in your face. It's not screaming for attention. It doesn't have giant kidney grills at the front that are more offensive than a terrible dad joke. No, it just looks nice. And I really like the newer split headlights light design however the facelift was actually designed by i want to say luke donchkerwolf i'll put the name up on the screen i'm sorry I, I can't pronounce that name but he used to work at the audi group and designed a couple of cars you might have heard of ever heard of the 2000 audi a4 avant he designed that ever heard of a little car called the lamborghini diablo vt 6.0 or the lamborghini murcielago or the Lamborghini Gallardo, or have you ever heard of the 2013 Bentley Flying Spur? Yeah, he designed all of those too, or at least ran the team that did. He's also designed recent vehicles like the 2017 Hyundai Kona, 2018 Hyundai Palisade, the 2020 Hyundai Sonata, 2021 Hyundai Elantra, and other vehicles under the Hyundai umbrella. So he does have some design chops to him, and this car is most certainly one of the best in his portfolio, in my opinion. However, let's take a look at the pre facelift versus the post facelift. So the white car is the pre facelift. This black car is the post pre 
post, pre, post, pre, post, pre, 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 post, post, post. There you go. With all of that being said and the songs out of the way, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving this Genesis G70 from 2023? I have to say I'm nothing short of blown away. Here's the thing. It's very nice in here. It drives really well. I like the two liter turbo. I like the eight speed and I love the features in here. Heated ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. I think the sound system has like 13 speakers. I lost count after that. The fit and finish in here is really nice. I think it's a very attractive car. I think it has decently modern tech. Would have liked to have seen wireless CarPlay. But at the end of the day, I'll be honest, I don't use wireless CarPlay. I always talk about it in videos. I don't use it. I think it's laggy in most cars and just kind of annoying. So I actually prefer wired. So I'm actually pretty happy in this car. Then you start to factor in the original sticker price. $47,000. I mean, that's a big chunk of change. Tax title fee, you're in the $50,000 range. And I think this does feel like a $50,000 car. I think in terms of styling and overall appearance, I think it does fit in that category. I'm not saying it doesn't. But now given the fact that Pasquale, who owns this car, bought it, with 6,000 miles on it for $30,000. That is an incredible deal for the amount of features that you get. To put it in perspective, that's only $7,000 more than I bought my 2019 Mazda 3 for. And yes, it has all wheel drive. Yes, it's a four cylinder. And yes, I love that car dearly, but I don't have heated seats. I don't have a heated steering wheel. I don't have ventilated seats. I only have eight speakers that are very dull. I don't have sport plus mode. I can't change my exhaust note. So it really starts to stack up that this is an incredible, incredible bargain. Why aren't more people buying this? I think one of the reasons is the fact that people are still scared of the Hyundai group. And the last time I posted a Genesis, I got so many comments of like, oh, it's a Hyundai, it's a Hyundai. That blah, blah, blah. Hyundais are always terrible. I'd, you'd never catch me dead in a Hyundai. People need to get beyond that. And people need to go out and quite frankly touch grass or better yet, touch a Genesis. Actually get in the seat and drive one. Put your bias in the back seat for a second. Take one out and drive one. And I know it's easier said than done. I know not everyone has access to cars and that's a big reason why you watch my videos. And I appreciate that. I'm not saying, oh, why don't you go to your neighborhood Genesis dealer and just drive one? I understand that's not a possibility for a lot of people. What I'm saying is that it's easy to criticize a car without driving it, without experiencing it. And I've experienced close to 1,500 different cars. And I have to say that this is a very good experience. Huge thank you to Pasquale for letting me take out his Genesis. I've reviewed a couple of his cars in the past, and this is a massive, massive upgrade. He's a huge help to the channel, one of the best, super easy to work with, and I appreciate him very, very much. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.